Hey everyone, this is Tony Switches Tech. I'm Tony, and in this video, I'm gonna show you how to enable SSH on your Raspberry Pi. Now, real quick for anybody out there who doesn't know what a Raspberry Pi is, this is a Raspberry Pi. It's a single board computer that sells for less than $50. Um, this one is a Raspberry Pi for the newest version as of now, late 2020. And you can do a lot of different things with this, but uh, this channel, at least for now, I'm gonna make some other videos about how to host a website on a Raspberry Pi. So if you're interested in learning how to do that, um, definitely check out some of those videos. Uh, but for now, the foundation, we will have to uh, first install an operating system, enable SSH. I'll show you how to pre-configure the Raspberry Pi to automatically connect to Wi-Fi. And then I will show you how to determine the IP address of the Raspberry Pi. And um, I'll actually show you how to log in via SSH as well. And also at the very end, I'll show you how to give it a host name so you don't have to remember the IP address. You can just remember a user-friendly host name. So that's something you wanna learn how to do. Let's go ahead and get on into the tutorial here. The first thing I'm gonna do is to take my micro SD card and plug it into my computer so we can load on the operating system. So go ahead and uh, plug that in. And you should see that pop up on the screen here, the device, um, there it is. So it's called Untitled right now. And what we're gonna use in order to image the micro SD card with the operating system is the official Raspberry Pi imager. If you don't already have that, you can go to raspberrypi.org under the software section and download the Raspberry Pi imager for whatever operating system you're using. I'm on Mac OS. Um, and I already have it installed, so I don't have to worry about that. Uh, I can just open it up. Let me go ahead and open that up. And uh, there we go. So there's basically two, three steps here. We have to choose our operating system, choose the SD card, and write the information to the SD card. So let's go ahead and go through that. Choose the operating system. Uh, you have lots of options here, but for this, let's work with the Raspberry Pi operating system. And I'm gonna use a headless version of Raspberry Pi operating system, which is in this uh, section here, you can expand that. And I'm gonna use this one with no desktop environment. And what that means is there's, the only way to access it is via SSH. This, the, the rest of this tutorial will work with other versions of um, Raspberry Pi OS, but this, we don't need the desktop environment, we just need the headless server environment. So I'm gonna click that. And then I'm gonna choose my SD card, which is going to be um, this one, the 64 gigabyte one right here. I'll click on that and then I will click on write. So it's just saying uh, this warning right here that everything on the SD card will be erased. So make sure you don't need anything on there because you're not gonna get it back. So that's fine with me. I'll click on yes. And um, I will type in my credentials and this will take you know a few minutes to, to write all that information to the SD card. So I'll pause the video and catch back up with you when it finishes. Okay guys, I'm back just a few minutes later and the writing has finished. The operating system is now on the SD card. So it's telling us that we can remove the SD card from the reader. So we can click on continue and we're actually done with the Raspberry Pi imager for now. So what I'm gonna do, uh, you'll see that the device has gone away. What I'm gonna do is pop the SD card out and then plug it back in. And um, maybe it'll pop up on the screen, maybe it won't, but what I'm gonna do is ultimately drag that device onto the screen so you can see uh, what it looks like now. So now the device is called boot, and I can put that anywhere really. Um, in here we have uh, all the files that it wrote during that writing process. And what we wanna do is to enable SSH, is to create a file an empty file in here called SSH. That's all we have to do to enable SSH. So if you're on Windows or on Mac or whatever, you can do this. I'm gonna actually do this with a terminal window and we can watch it happen in real time here. So um, what we're gonna do is just touch, like if you're familiar, the touch command, that's just gonna create an empty file. And this is at my volumes um, directory. In here I have the boot device and right in the root of the deboot device, we just wanna make a file called SSH, empty file. So I'll execute that command. And here you can see that that SSH file has been created. It's empty zero bytes. Um, that's that's nothing, nothing, it doesn't have to contain any content is all I'm trying to say. So that enables SSH, but because we are working in a headless environment and there is no way for us to ultimately type in the Wi-Fi password, um, you can, if you don't wanna connect via Wi-Fi, you can plug in a 
ethernet cord, but I think the easier way if you do have access to Wi-Fi is to already pre-configure your Raspberry Pi with your Wi-Fi credentials. So I'm gonna do that here, and it's gonna be a similar, uh, similar concept. We're gonna create a file in here with the credentials of our, uh, our Wi-Fi network. So we can do that with um, any text editor. You can right click here, make a new file if you're on Windows, but I'm gonna do it through the command line again. So same type of thing. At volumes inside the boot device, we wanna make a file called WPA underscore supplicant.conf. So let me just make sure we got that spelled right. It's WPA underscore S U P P L I C A N T dot conf. And in here, uh, I'm going to use my cheat sheet over here. And actually, I'll have this linked down in the description below so you can copy and paste and modify as necessary rather than typing it from the screen. Um, we have these few configuration options. So in here, you are going to uh, keep everything pretty much the same unless you have. Um, uh, or I guess the three things that we have to change in here, I should say, is your two letter ISO country code, which for me is US, and then your Wi-Fi name, which is going to be for me, my, my Wi-Fi network is called St. Ignatius, and the Wi-Fi password, which um, I'll, I'll pause the video here and type in so you don't know what the Wi-Fi password is, but type your Wi-Fi password in here in quotes instead of this. Go ahead and save the file, and then uh, I'll catch back up with you when you're done with that. Okay, so I have saved my file with my Wi-Fi password, and we can see that was created down here, WPA supplicant.conf. So as far as enabling SSH and our Wi-Fi credentials are concerned, we are good to go. Let's go ahead and eject this device from our computer. We can do that by clicking on this button right here. And I can physically remove this from my SD card reader, take it out of here and plug it into the Raspberry Pi, which is on the bottom. You can slide it right in there. And now we're good to go. So let's get a power cable, a USB-C, um, power cable plugged into uh, either a wall outlet or your computer and plug it in and you will see um, some indication of it booting up which this is not plugged in just give me a second okay so um, you'll see these two LED lights at the bottom right hand corner one of them red one of them green as it's booting up and we'll give it um, you know 30 seconds to a minute to boot up before trying to attempt to find out what the IP address is. Um, let me just put that there so it doesn't fall. Uh, but that's the next step in this process. We wanna know what the IP address is so we can SSH in. And in order to do that, we're gonna use a command, uh, the, the ping command. If you're not familiar, you can ping a website and get back the IP address. So just for demonstration purposes, let's ping google.com and it's gonna reply back to us with the IP address of Google. So we can use the same concept. We can ping the Raspberry Pi, uh, we can ping its device name, and it should give us back the, the, the IP address. So let's try that. If we ping Raspberry Pi, and this is just, this is a dot .local, this is just a default name that comes pre-configured with the operating system. It's gonna be given this name, Raspberry Pi dot .local. And um, if it's up and booted it and ready to go, it should respond to us with the IP address. So let's test that out. And we're getting back the IP address. So the IP address of our Raspberry Pi is 192.168.0136. So what we can do now is we can log in via SSH to our Raspberry Pi with this IP address. So we can do SSH. The default username for Raspberry Pi operating system is Pi. And then you can say at the IP address. So either copy and paste it or type it in at the IP address, hit enter. And um, because I have previously logged into this Raspberry Pi, I actually have to, at this IP address, I have to get rid of that. Um, please ignore this if, this if you don't get this error message, but this is just how I'm going to um, uh, undo my previous login session from that. So. Uh, go ahead, type that in if you're if it's not working. You might get this error message. It's not an error message. It's uh, uh, 
just a warning, I guess, saying, do you trust this connection? And you can go ahead and type in, yes, you trust it. Um, and that's going to add that information into your list of known hosts. And then if it's ready to go, it should eventually prompt us for the password. There we go. And the password, the default password for the Raspberry Pi is Raspberry. So type that in, hit enter. And now we are logged into the Raspberry Pi. So this is a terminal window inside of the Raspberry Pi. Um, we can do a uname dash A to see what type of operating system we're running. Linux Raspberry Pi version 5.4.51 um, ARM processor. Uh, just, just I guess, to prove that we're actually on the Raspberry Pi. Um, let's get out of the SSH session. And I just want to show you one last thing that you can do that I think is pretty cool, might be helpful for you, and that is uh, adding a host name for your Raspberry Pi. So um, instead of memorizing this IP address, you can give it a custom host name. And uh, on, I'll show you how to do that on Mac, and that same concept applies for Linux if you're running Linux, but also have a video about how to do this on Windows. It's slightly different, but what we're going to do is edit a um, configuration file on our computer at etc hosts. And in here, I have to type my password. In here, it's just a list of IP addresses and host names. So in here, I can give it the IP address of my Raspberry Pi, 192.168.0.136, and then tab over and give it a name that I will easily remember. So let me just call, um, let me call my Raspberry Pi uh, Raspberry. Okay. so. Now, instead of typing in the IP address like SSH pi at 192.168.0.136, I can do SSH pi at Raspberry. So we'll save that file and we'll give it a go. So SSH pi at Raspberry. Hit enter. Are you sure you want to con continue connecting? Um, you're not going to get that every time, only the first time that you connect at this device name. Hit yes or type yes, hit enter. Enter the password again. The password is Raspberry. Hit enter. And we should be logged in in just a few seconds. Oops, I typed the password wrong. There we go. So now we're back uh, logged into the Raspberry Pi via SSH. Hope this tutorial was helpful for you guys. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments below. Like I said, I have some other videos on this channel about how to host a website on a Raspberry Pi. So check those out if you're interested. Thank you guys for watching. I'll see you in the next one.